Aloha mai kako, o mako kapoe alakai, o US Vets ma Hawaii. US Vets Hawaii serves 850 veteran households and nearly 200 local family households with children each year. We are honored and blessed to serve our homeless and at risk veterans and local families here in the great Aloha State. From all of us to all of you, Aloha! Hello and welcome from U.S. Vets, Long Beach! Hi, I'm Larry Williams, the Executive Director of U.S. Vets Inglewood, and today I am joined by my dynamic team who comes to work every day with efforts of ending veterans homelessness. U.S. Vets Inglewood is the inaugural site for U.S. Vets. We opened our doors in 1993, where we had served five veterans who experienced homelessness. Today, we are serving more than 600 veterans, either in transitional or permanent housing. The fight still goes on. We need your continued support so one day we can end veterans' homelessness. We would like to thank you for your continued support Thank you! Good evening and welcome to Bob Hope Patriotic Hall. My name is Robert Storr. I'm the Executive Director at U.S. Vets Patriotic Hall. It's here that we partner with the Department of Military and Veteran Affairs as well as Los Angeles Department of Mental Health to provide a one-stop service center for veterans right here in Los Angeles. In addition, our innovative programming in employment, mental health on community college campuses, peer support and training, and a brand new program for women veterans informed and directed by women veterans is taking the lead in making sure our next generation of veterans don't end up homeless. In addition, we're out front in the area of suicide prevention. We're working with the Mayor's Challenge in Los Angeles to prevent suicide in the veteran community, as well as the Los Angeles Suicide Prevention Task Force and CalVet. We want you to know tonight that your partnership and generous support with us provides us the opportunity together to not only change lives, but in some case, save them. Thank you for being here and have a great evening. All of the warm hearts here at the Inland Empire, we welcome you, our sponsors, and everyone that is here today to share with us in our national gala. One team, one fight! I'm Shalomar Cabrera, and I'm the executive director of our site here in Las Vegas, and I'm here with our management team. Hello from Las Vegas. We bring greetings from over 300 veterans who call our programs their home, and we thank everybody for tuning in to tonight's Salute Gala. Thank you for your donations, which will support all of our sites across the country, including ours here in Las Vegas. We hope everyone is enjoying tonight's virtual gala, and we got a fun announcement for you. Next week, on November 18th at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, we're hosting our own virtual gala and we're doing it from right inside of here. Allegiant Stadium, home of the Las Vegas Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders have been so supportive of our mission since they came to town. And as the team experiences their first touchdowns in their new end zones, they're helping us to end veteran homelessness. We hope you'll join us on November 18th at 5.30 p.m for our first ever Honoring Those Who Serve virtual gala. Streaming information is available on our website. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you! Hi, I'm Michelle Jamison, Executive Director of US Vets Phoenix. My team and I would like to welcome you to the National Gala. During our last fiscal year, our hardworking team served 1,150 veterans. The workforce team in Phoenix has assisted over 365 individuals with career development and job search assistance. Out of those individuals, over 200 were able to accept employment throughout the Valley. Found permanent housing for 266 veterans. We addressed hunger and food insecurity by providing nearly 100,000 meals to veterans who would have otherwise gone hungry. Addressed mental health services by providing 1,020 counseling sessions. We provided over 50,000 bed nights for veterans who would have otherwise slept on the streets. 119 of who we helped are female. In early 2021, US Vets Phoenix will be moving into our new home with special thanks to the City of Phoenix, the City Council, and the Mayor. And thanks to everyone's support, 
We have been helping veterans experiencing homelessness in Maricopa County for almost 20 years. We salute you. And we pledge to continue our mission until no man or woman who served our country is left sleeping on our Phoenix streets. Thank you for helping us serve the people who serve us and enjoy the gala. Welcome to U.S. Vets Prescott. Prescott is home of the world's oldest frontier rodeo, home to Whiskey Row, and home to Fort Whipple. Hello from U.S. Best Houston, and welcome to Texas. As we salute our veterans, we also salute you, our friends and our supporters. Without your commitment to U.S. Vets, we cannot provide programs for the over 1,100 veterans we serve on an annual basis. Because of your support, veterans who once experienced homelessness can now be put on the path to productive independence. Because of you, together, we can continue to serve those who serve. So on behalf of U.S. Vets, Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you and we salute you. Hello from US Vets Washington DC. I wanna thank all of our community supporters, all of our community partners for helping us throughout this year. Thank you so much for your support from US Vets Washington DC. We, we are US Vets Washington DC. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem and posting of the colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of Good afternoon, I'm Michael Douglas. One of the many reasons it was important for me to be part of this first ever virtual U.S. Vets Salute Gala is because of my admiration for all people who have served. For me, it's very simple. Our veterans stepped up for all of us and it's our sacred responsibility to step up and support those veterans who are homeless and hurting 
and help them on their way back to self-sufficiency. My belief is the importance of supporting our veterans is a core value in our family, passed on to me by my dad, Kirk Douglas. Kirk sometimes wore a military uniform on screen in uh, Cast a Giant Shadow, In Harm's Way, Seven Days in May, and The Final Countdown. But he also wore a uniform in the United States Navy. He enlisted in 1941, right after Pearl Harbor, and served in anti-submarine warfare aboard USS PC-1139 in the Pacific Theater. And throughout his life, he was committed to veterans' causes, and I know he'd be thrilled to know I'm supporting this organization. Now, something else my dad would get a kick out of is the fact that his son is here to introduce the son of one of his best friends. Kirk was very close to Gregory Peck. They were friends, real friends, and they teamed up on a number of important causes. I'm teaming up at this gala with Greg Peck's son, a veteran who has dedicated his life to his fellow veterans. Please welcome U.S. Marine Corps veteran, U.S. Vets CEO, Stephen Peck. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual U.S. Vets Salute Gala. It seems like nothing this year has been business as usual, so why should our gala be any different? Even though it's virtually, I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak to you and all of our supporters and dedicated partners across the country, as well as our veterans and families. This is the first time that all of you and our many locations and staff across the country are able to participate in our annual U.S. VETS celebration and the progress we are making to end veterans' homelessness. Our thoughts are first and foremost with our community members and families across the country who have lost loved ones this year. COVID-19 has changed our lives, not just this year, but for years to come. On top of the pandemic, so many in our community are struggling with unemployment, struggling to afford housing and, and facing mental health and personal challenges that can seem insurmountable. We are also reckoning with our history and the kind of nation we want to be, one dedicated to equality and opportunity for all. At U.S. Vets, we are facing these challenges head on. We are supporting each other and our veterans. Throughout our history, we have fought side by side with men and women of all races to defend our nation. Our armed forces have always fought to protect the ideals we aspire to. Similarly, U.S. Vets is committed to protecting and lifting up the veterans and communities we serve. I'm especially proud of all our frontline staff who are providing safe, compassionate care for our veterans. They are the people who are standing between these veterans and homelessness. Let me give you a couple of examples. Max is a Navy veteran in Las Vegas who lost his job, lost his apartment, ended up living on the street and then contracted COVID. He didn't have a support system in Las Vegas, so he turned to U.S. Vets for help. Once Max was released from the hospital, U.S. Vets stepped in and provided him with a place to quarantine, provided him with food, case management, and most of all, hope. He is job hunting as we speak. Or Dottie, a Navy vet who was a victim of sexual assault while in the military. She didn't report the incidents because she didn't think anyone would believe her an all too common story among women veterans. She carried this trauma with her for the next 40 years. And though she had been working as a bus driver, she was in turmoil inside, couldn't hold her life together and found herself homeless and sleeping in the back of the bus. A friend told her about the US Vets Advanced Women's Program. She moved in that week and through the one-on-one -on -one therapy and the camaraderie of other women veterans, she started opening up healing the wounds from decades ago, and taking pride in herself again. This is what we do. Our staff helps veterans like these every single day. As this pandemic lengthens with more and more people losing their jobs, U.S. Vets is needed now more than ever. As our economy rebuilds, as our nation looks to the future, we need to be here to help our veterans and families with the resources they need and deserve. Safe and affordable housing, and careers that allow them to provide for themselves and their families. U.S. Vets not, is not standing still during this crisis. We continue to innovate, to improve the, our services, and reach out to more veterans. This past year, we have launched the Judge Harry Pregerson Aftercare Program, 
providing extended care to veterans who have graduated from our programs and moved out into the community and who still need some guidance. Our peer support program is engaging veterans with life experience to help their fellow vets navigate what can be a confusing network of support services. And our Women Vets on Point program reached more than 15,000 at-risk women veterans and is leading the way across our agency for our increased capacity to provide counseling and case management through telehealth, reaching out to veterans who feel isolated and helping more veterans than ever before. We're building affordable housing, which is a critical need in all of our communities if we are to continue to reduce the number of homeless veterans. This year, we opened our Liberty Point campus in the city of Prescott to serve veterans across northern Arizona. We also responded to the emergency housing needs of our Los Angeles community, opening a winter shelter in Long Beach and a bridge home in Wilmington. We're building Hawaii's very first tiny home community to shelter homeless and at-risk veterans. And thanks to the city of Phoenix, U.S. Vets was awarded a building that will add 40 units of permanent housing to the 140 veterans we already house. And of course, we continue construction on the nation's largest veteran housing community at the West Los Angeles VA campus, which will create 1,600 units of permanent supportive housing, an aggressive answer to the unacceptable number of homeless veterans in Los Angeles. Tonight, you'll also see the efforts of a very special group of supporters. Thanks to our friends at Warner Media, UTA, Warner Music Group, Comcast, NBC Universal, Balance for Change, and a host of others, U.S. Vets will reach a national audience with its first ever PSA campaign, Home Base for Opportunity, which will premiere tonight and air tomorrow to households across America. We have long wanted to get the word out to veterans and families about the services available at U.S. Vets, and we are grateful for this incredible opportunity. Our progress is made possible by an army of supporters who are committed to our nation's veterans and to the work we do at U.S. Vets. So today, which also happens to be the 245th birthday of the Marine Corps, I am honored to serve you, particularly in these challenging times which test our resolve and shapes our character. It's wonderful to be here, following up my dad and supporting his mission. I love you, Dad. Hearing Michael Douglas share some terrific memories about his dad, Kirk, who served our country, and the generations of support for our nation's veterans. It reminds me how important it is that we all continue to reaffirm our commitment to our troops and to our veterans when they come home. I couldn't be more proud to join you in celebrating U.S. vets and saluting the dedicated staff that carry out the organization's mission to end veteran homelessness round the clock, each and every day, even through natural disasters and pandemics. They're the reason that U.S. Vets is able to help thousands of veterans achieve self-sufficiency, dignity, and optimism for a better future. Tomorrow on Veterans Day, we pay tribute to those who served, those who made the ultimate sacrifice, and the families of our servicemen and women. For in many ways, they are serving too. At U.S. Vets, it is Veterans Day every day. I am honored tonight to have the opportunity to introduce you to one of the veterans and families served by U.S. Vets Hawaii. They are a testament to the incredible resilience of our service members and the power of family and community and the importance of U.S. Vets. Please take a look at the story of Sterling Bear. To our family, he tried his best to be what he thought we expected him to be. But in truth, he was really in pain. And I think the mental issues that occurred because of that, it was hard for him to cope with all of those things. So the son that had left me was not the same son. I remember it was a sunny day and there was a bit of a sandstorm and uh, it was hot. And there was this loud explosion went off um, just outside our gate. And uh, in comes 100 Battalion with 
with a casualty and uh, he has bilateral amputations. Both of his legs were blown off by a roadside bomb. As we were loading him into the ambulance, pieces of him were falling off of the litter and so I picked those pieces up and I put them in my pockets and uh, I, had, I had done so well in the deployment with my medic duties that I felt so sure that I wouldn't let this man die. Um, he took comfort in that, I think, in those last moments, but he died anyway. What was life like after I came back home? Well, I think that we all come home and you kind of um, expect to have your happily ever after. I mean, you, you, you served your country well and you saved as many lives as you could. and. And we did a good job. A lot of combat missions and PTSD. I'm drinking use myself out of, out of a marriage, um, out of a home. Uh, I remember when my I remember when my oldest daughter was born, I had cut her cord and I held her up and I made a promise, a solemn promise that that's it. I'm I'm gonna just be the best dad possible. And uh it didn't take didn't take long to break that promise. And so I got all this shame and uh, pain from the war and memories. God, the sleep, you can't sleep. You just can't sleep. Gosh, it was the night before that last stint in jail. I was homeless. just weeping and so I was lying in that field and I remember praying to God and saying I can't and I need help and uh, well the next day I got picked up by the police I got thrown in jail and so uh, while I was in jail I, I, I was going through the phone book and looking at different treatment centers that I might be able to uh, apply to and I saw US events and so the judge released me to, to finish my time I stayed at that treatment center for for one year and did everything that was suggested man that was the beginning of of the new life for sergeant bear yeah. <laughs> i can say thank you uh first off because the life that i live today is is truly because i had that place yeah when i came out of homelessness in jail i had nothing you know, I, I, they gave me food, they gave me clothing, they gave me shelter, they allowed me, the, they gave me the rides that I needed to get down to the VA to get really linked up. They've got me into treatment. Fourth of July's, I remember Memorial Days while I was uh, at US Vets. You know, and they go big, they honor, they honor the vets. And that's something that you lose in the streets. It's something that I lost in the streets. It was my honor. Yeah, and that's a big thing for a soldier. And I thought it was gone forever kids. I've got the, I wound up getting out of the U.S. vets and going on and getting my own place and getting a job and getting back into school. So I got my associate's degree and then I got my bachelor's degree and then I said keep going. I got my master's degree and um, if there are any um, veterans out there that uh, are dealing with any PTSD issues, substance abuse issues, if you're feeling alone, if you have thoughts of suicide, if you feel sometimes like this, this world would be better off without you, if you feel like you've lost your honor. I have the same feeling and there is a place, there is help, there's a place you can go. I went to US Vets and it's us, it's, it's the vets. There's a group of people that recognize what you and I did for this country. And it was a lot. Comedian Steve Trevino here, uh, doing a quick shout out to the men and women who have served our country. I do believe we live in the greatest country in all the world. And we live in that great country because men and women volunteer to defend it. Now, one thing that we can do to serve our veterans is to be here 
for them when they return. I had the opportunity because I am a Texan and Texas means so much to me. I had an opportunity to go visit US vets in Houston, Texas. It was inspiring to see what they do with our veterans. They take our veterans from homelessness to independence. And I just thought that was amazing. Something that was shocking to me is the fact that one in every nine homeless person in Houston, Texas is a veteran. And US Vets has gotten together to make a difference, to do something, to get them off the streets and into the workforce and into being independent. So this Veterans Day, I hope you all join me and US Vets in celebrating our service members and supporting those who have truly served. God bless America. Good evening, everyone. Needless to say, these are trying times. COVID came and turned our world upside down. U.S. Vets operates 24-7 residential facilities across the nation that have a high propensity to have communal spread. Therefore, we had to implement safety protocols from day one. This meant creating essential duty teams, as well as following the CDC guidelines that were set forth. As a result of the nearly 5,000 veterans that are under our care, only 1.3% were exposed to COVID. Of the nearly 500 staff members that work across the sites, only 15 were exposed to COVID, none of which was done at work. I'd like to take this time to thank the staff and veterans for remaining safe, as well as keeping the community safe. COVID merely exasperated the veterans' housing and service needs that all of us need to address. We all have a responsibility to give back to the veterans and the community in which we live, and no one job is more important than the other, just a different delegation of duty, and we all play a role. As if COVID wasn't enough, we had to witness the social unrest that was the direct result of the racial discrimination that seemed to divide our nation. Now, we don't all have to agree on the same ideas and ideology. What we can agree on is any veteran feels like they're suffering an injustice or being racially discriminated against simply because of the color of their skin in the same country that he or she was once asked to serve, we all suffer injustice and we all must address this. We as society cannot say we stand for veterans and not stand up against social inequality. Over half of the veterans experiencing homelessness are of color, and that's extremely disproportionate to the total amount of veterans. This is not by accident. This is due to historic and institutionalized bias and discrimination that we first must acknowledge without any ambiguity and address. We're not saying it's any one person's fault or any group's fault. We're saying it's all our responsibility to solve. U.S. Vets addresses this head on. We don't see this as a Democrat or Republican issue. This is not a man or woman issue, gay or straight, black or white. It's a human issue that affects all of us, so it takes all of us to resolve it. Society pushes two myths. One, that if I disagree with your lifestyle, I must fear and hate you. Two, if I love you, I must believe everything you say or do. Both are nonsense. We do not have to compromise our convictions in order to be compassionate. We are all compassionate for serving veterans. Yet, we have different ethnic backgrounds, education backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, but we come together for one common goal, to serve veterans, despite our different stances on different societal issues. I want to challenge us to change the way we do our work culturally and how we work together. Language dictates culture, and we should no longer stigmatize our veterans by calling them homeless veterans. They are veterans experiencing homelessness. A person should be labeled by their current situation or their past versus who they are as a person and they are veterans first and foremost. U.S. Vets has been at the forefront to provide a home during this pandemic, to provide a safe place during social unrest. And we ask you to join in our fight to make sure that veterans can continue to access these resources and stand up for the social equality and equity that they not only deserve as a citizen, but they've earned as a member of the armed forces. Thank you. Good evening. I hope you're as moved as I am by the wonderful program tonight. Hearing from U.S. Vets leadership and clients and the staff across the country that care for veterans every day, it makes me proud to serve alongside U.S. Vets in their mission to end veteran homelessness. I come from a military family. My dad was a Navy fighter pilot and my brother followed in his footsteps after graduating from the Naval Academy. Our family has always believed in the value of service. So for me, the decision to join the family business First, as part of Duke Navy ROTC, and then in the Navy itself was an easy one. 
I served on board the USS Constellation as one of 10 women in the aircraft carrier ship's company and deployed to the Persian Gulf in 1997. My experience there forever shaped my work ethic and my understanding of the need to show up for one another. We are only as strong as our community. But our commitment to service members can't just be reserved for active duty. We owe it to our veterans to ensure they have the services and support they need when they come home. Those of us who work in Hollywood understand the impact of a powerful message and the value of telling stories that matter. That's why I'm so pleased to be here tonight to share U.S. Vets' first ever public service announcement created to get the word out about the services available to our veterans and their families when they come home. This effort wouldn't be possible without the help of my Warner Media and HBO family, who have a long commitment to our military and veterans and who signed on as premier distribution partner without hesitation the moment we asked. We also couldn't do it without the dedicated partnership of our friends at UTA, as well as the Smashing Pumpkins, Warner Music Group, Universal Music Group, all of the celebrities and media partners that have signed on to share this PSA, and the production team at Balance for Change who brought U.S. Vets mission to life. And now I'm so pleased to bring you the world premiere of U.S. Vets first PSA debuting tomorrow in households across America. Here is U.S. Vets home base for opportunity. Enjoy. They stepped up and enlisted to bravely serve our country, but life is challenging, and sometimes we need a shoulder for support. Two things that should never go together, veterans and homelessness. That's where U.S. Vets comes in. Founded by veterans to uplift veterans, U.S. Vets is an army of professional staff, donors, veterans, and civilian volunteers alike. U.S. Vets is the home base for opportunity. Good evening, and thank you so much to all of you for joining us for this year's virtual U.S. Vets Salute Gala. I'm Joe Chiswick, and as the chair of U.S. Vets National Board of Directors and a very proud Navy Seabees veteran, I wanted to thank you for your dedication to our veterans. Together, we've built U.S. Vets into the largest veteran service nonprofit organization in America. But we're not done yet. A mission of this magnitude takes extraordinary investment. It takes boots on the ground, to combat America's homeless veterans crisis head on. And today, the need for U.S. Vets housing, mental health and career services is greater than ever. This evening and our work throughout the year would not be possible without the support of our dedicated partners and without every one of you. I hope you enjoyed our first ever PSA and that you'll join us in sharing it far and wide on Veterans Day tomorrow and throughout the month of November. As our most dedicated supporters, you got to see it here first. Tomorrow, we will reach thousands across America thanks to our friends at UTA, as well as Warner Media, who generously signed on our, as our premier distribution partner for this project at the very beginning. It's incredible that so many entertainment industry partners have decided to amplify our voice and enhance our mission. Before we sign off tonight, I want to recognize the U.S. Vet staff who has worked very hard to continue to provide exemplary care to our veterans in this challenging time, and of course my colleagues on our National Board of Directors and Regional Advisory Boards. And a special tribute for my fellow board member, Hal Lampert. Hal and Sharon have made a very generous matching gift that will enable U.S. Vets to care for hundreds more veterans each year. I hope you'll double your impact and contribute to U.S. Vets today as well. On behalf of the staff and board of U.S. Vets, we pledge to continue our mission until no one who served our country when called on is left sleeping on our streets. We thank you for joining us in this fight. Good night. <laughs>